graded potentials. <clears throat> so, we know that if we open and close channels, we change membrane potential. All right, well, how does that affect the cell? So, so far, we've been looking at this tiny little part of the cell, um, the cell membrane, just little one little area. Well, <clears throat> we're going to zoom out a little and, and actually talk about the whole cell now. Um, so, here we're talking about a neuron, right? Uh, to remind you, a neuron has a cell body, it's got an axon, and then it has dendrites, right? The axon is sort of the business end of the neuron. When the axon gets excited, when the initial segment gets excited, it sends this electrical signal from one side to the other called the action potential, all right? So, in order to make that happen, first, we have to depolarize a part of this neuronal cell membrane. That process is called a local potential or a, a regional pot uh, potential. In other words, if we have an area of membrane and that area of membrane has um, uh, either channels open or channels close, its membrane potential is gonna change. Because the, chan the uh, channels are voltage sensitive, when that membrane potential changes, it causes additional membrane potential changes, right? So it's kind of a propagation. All right, so a little bit of uh, vocabulary. A shift in resting membrane potential towards the positive is called a depolarization. Okay, so if we go from resting at minus 90 to activated at plus 30, that is a change towards the positive, right? So the, the word we use for that is depolarization. All right, so now we're at plus 30. Well, if we go back to minus 70, okay, so back down to the normal, we call that repolarization, okay? And if we become more negative than we are typically, that is hyperpolarization, all right? So we have these three words, depol, repol, and hyperpolarization. Okay, now these changes in membrane potential might be <clears throat> caused by anything that causes sodium or potassium to move. The gated channels are the most common thing. Okay, so here we're at rest. Here we've added a ligand to these receptors. Do you see that? That ligand causes this um, uh, channel to open. Sodium comes rushing in. As sodium comes rushing in, the membrane potential depolarizes, it becomes less negative as the charge changes, okay? <clears throat> so what we have is we have um, I, uh, charge that's moving in one place that's affecting the adjacent membrane, okay, which is the essential of an action potential. Now, <clears throat> um, in order for an action potential to occur, the cell has to reach a threshold. This is kind of like noise suppression, okay? So the brain is a noisy place. There's, there's a lot of neurons doing a lot of things. An individual neuron only wants to fire on purpose, according to its rules. So how does it handle all this chatter of other neurons firing around it and not being accidentally triggered? Well, it has a threshold, right? So here we have one neuron that's being affected by two other excitatory neurons, all right? So <clears throat> if this neuron receives two signals at the same time, that will depolarize this region of membrane enough that it will trigger an action potential and something will happen. If either one of these is fired, but not both, it won't reach its threshold. So it gives our nervous system a kind of intelligence so that it isn't as simple as a switch and a wire. You have to have multiple switches that happen at the same time in order to get a signal down the wire. So if we look at this area right here, this is a graded potential or a regional potential or a local potential. Those all mean the same thing, all right? So in other words, one part of the cell has been affected by some other um, by the, in this case, neurons, but it could also be ligand-gated channels or something like that. But one area of the cell is, is affected. How much that effect uh, sums up to be will determine if this action potential happens or not. 
Okay, so we have both um, excitatory stimuli, that's depolarization, and inhibitory stimuli. So remember, neurons don't just send the signal of activation. They also send the signal of inhibition, right? So if we have two neurons that both fire an inhibitory signal, send an inhibitory neurotransmitter, that makes the subsequent cell much less likely to fire, right? So it goes both directions. A neuron can be stimulated by another neuron or inhibited by another neuron. 